Hey, it's Joni. Welcome back. I am here today to share with you some of my favorite horror books that are not written by Stephen King. I talk about Stephen King all the time, so I thought I would exclude him from this list. Um, it's always hard for me to say like my absolute top favorite. I always put like eight qualifiers in. So these are just the 10 that came to mind today. Ones that some of them I read forever ago and they just have still stuck with me. One of them that I just read in the last couple of weeks and it is a newfound favorite that I haven't talked about since I've read it yet. So that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, anyway, I'm just going to get into it. The first book I'm going to talk about is that one that I just read, actually, and that is Endless Night by Richard Lehman. Everybody who told me I was going to love this was so right. This book is told, it has a pretty interesting format. The majority of it is told um, in third person from the point of view of the 16-year-old girl who at the beginning of the book escapes this group of crazy serial killers. Uh, most of it from her point of view. As this is happening and she's escaping and trying to get away, all of that, along with the 12-year-old brother of her best friend. Uh, the rest of the book is told through so f is told through tape recordings made by one of the killers, the one who is left behind to clean up these two survivors to kill them. Um, and so that one that is first person. Obviously, it's much more limited. You get all sorts of interesting like backstory and dynamics of this group of killers. It is just such a fast paced book. Um, I got a lot of content warnings about this, and, and that is appropriate, but none of it, for my taste, felt overly gratuitous. Like, there were no parts where I felt, like, super uncomfortable with it. My standards are probably fairly high, but I have read books that, that have made me a little bit squeamish, and none of this felt like it was over the top. It didn't feel like torture porn, um, which, again, I have read some things that felt like that. So, uh, if you have gotten a lot of content warnings and you're a little bit on the fence about this one, Personally, it wasn't too much for me. It was absolutely great. Like I said, it's a pretty thick book, 450 pages roughly, um, and I blew through it. Five stars. Highly recommend this one. The next one that I want to talk about is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This, uh, the main characters in this are some sisters who are living very different lives, um, and they encounter a serial killer, or a serial killer somehow becomes entangled in their lives. It has so many twists and turns and questions and wondering what's going on. It involves some crimes from the past being brought up as well as very uh, present crimes going on at the moment. It, again, it was super fast paced. I blew through this one. This one almost did cross that line into feeling a little bit, bit gratuitous. If you have a weak stomach or don't like reading really graphic, violent content, wouldn't recommend this one for you. But personally, it, it had those like awesome thriller vibes, but took it to the horror level that I enjoy in a book. So it was almost a little bit too much for my taste in some areas, but overall, oh my gosh, this one was fantastic and it made me fall in love with Karen Slaughter. I've now read three more of her books and I'm chomping at the bit to read another one. The next one that I'm going to talk about is I Am Behind You by John Avita Lindquist. I understand that this one is not nearly as popular or highly rated as the other books, most of the other books probably on this list, because it is quite a bit slower. It doesn't have a ton of action in it, but for me, it was fantastic. It didn't feel slow to me. It didn't feel boring in any, in any way to me. Um, I didn't mind that it didn't have this clear, like, direction it was going, you know, if that makes sense. Anyway, this one is about a group, a little, like, campsite, basically, a group of people and campers camping out. They um, wake up one morning and everything around them is gone. They're, like, in an endless field that seems to go on forever. It's just, you know, these couple random different families, couples, people who have been camping out in this, like, crazy Twilight Zone situation. It has the best character work in it, the most interesting characters. I think so anyway. Um, it does have some supernatural elements that come into play, but it's mostly just about these people trying to figure out how to navigate the situation, like what they do, how they try to get out, how they try to work together or not work together. It has some super creepy kids in it. This is by the same author as Let the Right One In for reference, so he does the creepy kid thing really well. Uh, I just love this one. I listened to the audio of it and I would say that the the narration was fantastic as well. This is written by a Swedish, I believe, author, so it had a lot of names and place names that I would have struggled pronouncing, so I really appreciate audiobooks for that as well. I can just hear them told to me and I don't have to like fumble over them every time. Um, but yeah. The next one I want to talk about is The Troop by Nick Cutter. Uh, this one is basically about a group of like Boy Scouts who go to a little island for a little survivalist trip. At the same time, though, this weird-ass parasite thing 
is released and these kids in this survivalist situation now have this crazy creepy parasite thing to deal with it has those great survivalist elements it has some like psychopathic people i'll just leave it at that in it um it has some like government elements that are really fun it's told in the um, it has some epistolary components to it, which I really enjoy. It was definitely, um, drew some inspiration from several different King works, which you can appreciate or not. Uh, the epistolary thing seemed definitely inspired by Carrie, though that's obviously not the only other place it's done. A lot of the characters seemed reminiscent of situations or characters that happened in it. There's actually even a, a turtle in it. But anyway, that's all beside the point. It just really worked for me. It was a ton of fun. It was a ton of creepiness. It like just kept ratcheting up the crazy situations and it just, it was lovely. The next one I have to talk about is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. This one is about a young woman whose entire family, like her sisters and her mother, were brutally murdered when she was a young child. She survived obviously, as did her elder brother who is in prison for the crimes. Um, our main character is super morally gray in this, which is fantastic. She's like living off of the goodwill of people because of her situation basically, and she's running out of money. Like people don't care anymore. She's not a little girl anymore. She's not getting donations anymore. Um, and there are a lot of people who think that her brother is innocent. So again, lots of twisty turny things, lots of creepy things. It's like a fantastic thriller with a lot of grit and a lot of horror elements thrown into it, which is just is just lovely. I would highly recommend this one if you have not checked it out yet. But the next one is an oldie but a goodie. I have The Witching Hour by Anne Rice. This is also a very thick one, over a thousand pages with some pretty little font. Um, it, I will also say this is the first one in a series, but I did not continue on in the series and I, you definitely don't have to. It's a very good standalone book. Uh, it involves the 13th person, the like 13th generation of this family of witches. She is not like involved in any witchy business, but in order to uh, draw some inheritance, she has to go visit some of this family that she's not really grown up around, that she's never had any involvement with. There is this entity thing that sort of helped or haunted maybe her family of witches throughout the generations who has been drawing power throughout these generations and there's something going on with being the 13th generation something's gonna happen uh, I read this a very long time ago I will say but I just remember like for a thousand pages it kept my attention there's a chunk in the middle that's like 300 solid pages or something of backstory of the family that part dragged a little bit for me but overall this book is phenomenal and I know I read it a long time ago but I will stand behind it I highly recommend this one the next one I have to talk about is a collection, Strange Weather by Joe Hill. This has four novellas in it. They all really cross that sci-fi line. They're all quite different. They all have some element of weather in them. Uh, I guess I don't want to give any synopses. They're fairly short. I would highly recommend them though. This is probably the least scary of anything on this list, but the most um, political sub subtext of anything on this list and the most like overarching uh, worldwide consequences, I guess, are explored in this, or societal consequences, societal norms, societal issues are explored in this. So it's sort of a different kind of horror, the horror that's there. There's also just some like fun horror in this as well. I don't know. I just really, really appreciated this. I like Joe Hill, and I think I especially like his shorter work. That's me personally. If you haven't read this one yet, you should think about it. Just three more books to talk about. The next one I have here is Blood Highway by Gina Wolsdorf. This one involves a teenager whose father has broken out of prison, who uh, seemingly has a lot of mysteries about her family or secrets about her family that she was unaware of. Uh, some weird things happen. She ends up sort of kind of kidnapped. There's some travel going on, some uh, potentially not being willing to doing this travel, and a whole lot of bloody mess going on. It's another one of those thriller horror books that has the sort of format of a thriller like Endless Night or Pretty Girls, but definitely brings the horror to the table. Um, her two books that she's published, the other one being Security, are very short, very quick, fun thrillers that I just absolutely love. The next one I have is actually the fourth book in a series, but it is a prequel. Um, and I'm going to talk about it anyway. It's Hannibal Rising by Thomas Harris. It is my favorite book of the series. This one um, obviously surrounds Hannibal Lecter, 
uh, it, it goes through his upbringing or upbringing um, and the trauma of his childhood and him seeking revenge as a young adult and sort of coming into his own, coming into his, um, to being a doctor, to being a cannibal. I, it's just a ton of fun. It has a much older setting than obviously Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs, and Hannibal do. Anyway, this is another one of those just quick paced books that I flew through. Absolutely love it. The final book I have to talk about is one that I also listened to the audiobook, and I think I would specifically recommend that. That is Cold Moon Over Babylon by Michael McDowell. That book has fallen like 10 times. I'm just done with it. It can stay on the floor. This one is a southern gothic horror novel, and the audiobook just brings that quality to the table. The way it's narrated is fantastic. I would highly recommend it. But anyway, the story takes place in the South. I actually don't remember. Georgia, Alabama. I'm not entirely sure. That's not the point. A 15-year-old, a teenage girl, at the beginning of this book is found murdered in a pretty horrible way. It's essentially a ghost story. Um, it just has that sort of crawling, creeping, southern quality to it that I don't quite know how to explain. Um, it's got a lot of family drama, a lot of class dynamics going on in it, and it's just... It's just fantastic. If you haven't tried any Michael McDowell, I know he's been making the rounds on booktube in the last couple of years and you just, you should probably try it and you should probably start with the audiobook of this guy. So those are 10 of my favorite horror novels not written by Stephen King. There are plenty more books that I could add to this list so maybe I'll do another part again in the near future, maybe after I've read a couple more new favorites. Please comment down below what some of your favorite horror novels are, especially if I did not talk about them or you think I have not read them. I'm always on the lookout for more even though my TBR list is like 3,000 books long. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you all again soon. Bye.